Welcome to the show that takes up no more than five minutes of your time, but could help you gain massive real estate knowledge. It's Five Minutes in Real Estate with best selling author Shane Willis. Hello, it's Shane Willis, Pensacola Real Estate Expert, bringing you today's episode. Well, hope you had a good 4th of July. Um, looks like some stuff downtown got rained out. Uh, we weren't even actually heading downtown. Uh, I had just kind of family. The kids had a friend or two over, and we may or may not have um, fired off some fireworks that we bought in Alabama. Uh, right here in the neighborhood and had a good time there so yeah we may or may not have done that uh, because those may or may not be illegal in Florida (laughs) anyways hope you had a good time Uh, day off we're gonna get back to real estate now Uh, I know I've been going (laughs) with a lot of people actually reached out to me yesterday want to start either looking or talking about selling um, yesterday which was a little odd. I usually don't get a lot of those phone calls on 4th of July, but I think maybe the rain had people talking and thinking and stuff like that. So today I'm going to talk about how much more affordable property is than it has been in 20 years. And I know as soon as I say that, you're going to, I'm going to get some emails. I'm going to get some phone calls with people that didn't actually listen to the episode. They're just going to see the title and they're going to go, how in the hell are you saying houses are more affordable when they've been going up for the last you know, three, four years, five years. How are you saying they're more affordable now than they were before? Well, if we look at this, there are more to affordability, or there is, not or, let me see if I can English this morning. There is more to the affordability calculation than just price. If we looked at the price index, yes, our house is more expensive this year than they were last year. Yes, absolutely. Does that make them more affordable than they were, let's say in 2006, the boom? No, it actually makes it much more affordable now than it was in the boom. Prices have come back to about 2006 price points. But what's the big difference between now and uh, the prices we saw in 2006? Mortgage rates, mortgage interest rates. That's what's making a big difference. Today's mortgage interest rates are about 4.5%. Between 1985 and 2000, that whole 15-year period, the average mortgage interest rate was 8.92%. That's why I keep, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at at customers today that are getting, you know, upset because they got a little ding on their credit um, and they're having to get a rate at 5.125 or 5.25. They're like, my goodness, I can't believe I'm getting a five. Or people are getting upset in the high fours. You're like, wait a minute. (laughs) I remember in 2004 and five, we were doing rates at six all day long. Those were good rates. If you got six, you were good rates because we were writing stuff at seven if you didn't. So the affordability of properties comes down to mortgage interest rates right now. Now those are rising, so it's gonna become less and less affordable. But let me kind of give you some statistics. Um, There was a report comparing home affordabilities over the decades using a formula. The report revealed revealed that though homes are less affordable this year than last year, that's because of price, they are more affordable today, 17.1% more affordable today than they were between 1985 and 2000. Additionally, (laughs) hey puppy, additionally homes are more affordable now than at the peak of the housing bubble. Remember that bubble I was talking about? They're 25% more affordable now. So when I say homes are more affordable today than they were in the peak, or more affordable than they were between 85 and 2000, that's what I mean. And it's all because of mortgages. Now let's take a look at what happens when interest rates rise. We're suspecting interest rates to be at 5% by the end of the year. I don't know if we'll quite hit that, Uh, because they seem to be flattening a little more than everybody expected, but that's been my prediction all year, so I'm going to kind of stick with that for now. Things change come Halloween, I'll let you know. But for now, I think we're probably going to be at 5 or close to 5 by the end of the year. So what happens? 
the monthly home mortgage payments of a typical American household if we rise, okay? You're gonna have, in between 1985 and 2000, the household cost was about 21% of the annual income, or monthly income, excuse me. 21% of the monthly income. So for every $100 you made, you spent $21 on your house. That was just for your house payment, okay? If we get up to 5%, if we get up to 5% interest rate, that's gonna be 19, as opposed to the 17% now that we're at. So instead of 21, which was what 1985 to 2000 was, we're at 17 something now. If we get up to 5%, that's gonna be 19. If we get up to 6%, and the forecast is gonna put us back between 1985 and 2000, now you're gonna be back to 21%. Now, if we get up to 7%, that's going to be 23 and a half. That's when it's going to become less affordable than it was between 85 and 2000. So the whole point of this particular episode is to let you know that, yes, prices have risen. I agree with that. And some buyers are complaining that prices are getting a little high. I don't think they are, especially when you look at the whole affordability aspect of a property right now. 17% of your monthly income going towards a household as opposed to 21 or 25% if rates rise. It kind of makes sense to own a property now, lock in these rates, even if you have to lock in a five, at least you're locking in something that is much, much lower than historic standards. So rates are still very low. Are, are we gonna see the threes again? Probably not, probably not for a while. Are we gonna to start to see some assumability happening? Maybe. What do I mean by assumability? I mean like my property that I bought a year and a half ago, I locked in a rate at three and three quarters, okay? But it's a VA loan. Most VA loans are assumable by another veteran. Now, the reason most people use a VA loan is because they wanna put zero down. You wouldn't be able to assume a loan and put zero down. You would, however, if you had some money though and wanted to lock in a lower interest rate and be further along in your mortgage, be able to assume my mortgage, let's say I sell my house five years from now. Well, I'm seven, eight years into a mortgage. You could just pay me the difference, what my mortgage is and what the house is worth. You just pay me the difference in cash. Then you can assume my mortgage. Now you have to be a veteran and there's a whole bunch of steps to it, but are we gonna start to see some of those? Eh, probably. They're not gonna be as common as they were way back in the day, but I think they may be more and more common. <clears throat> but regardless, if we're looking at fives or even sixes, you gotta get above six before it starts to really become less and less affordable than it has been in most recent decades. Today, houses are more affordable than they were for decades. All right, that's all I got for you today. As always, if you've not subscribed to get the tips, tricks, graphs, I link up the research that I'm doing here so you can see where I'm getting it from. Get over to 5minutesinrealestate.com. That's 5minutesinrealestate.com. Also, if you've not subscribed to the podcast, go to your player of choice, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, wherever. Um, I think we're pretty much everywhere. And if I'm not, if there's a player that you don't know, that, that you know about that I'm not on there, Go to one that I am, send me a message on it saying, hey, you're not on you know, XYZ player. And we'll figure out a way if we can get on there or not. But make sure you subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, give us a heart. Finally, I always finish the podcast the same way. It costs me money to do these things, but I never ask you guys for any money for listening. Instead, I say if I bring any value from this episode or any other episode, all I do is ask you to share it on social media. Have a great Thursday.